Hi, I'm Emily Spangers. I'm going to be doing my presentation on Anishinaabe birch bark containers. Right, so to make your birch bark basket or container, of course you need a birch tree, which you can see on the slide there. Um, and that will be for the main part of your container. Um, you will also need either basswood fiber, the inner part of the bark, to sew it together, or you can also use um, skinned spruce root. And if you want, you can dye that to make it nice colors to make your basket more beautiful. Um, if you're making a very large container, you may need to make a frame out of willow for it. Um, and you will, if you are unable to find a really good piece of birch bark, you will also need um, pine pitch to kind of patch the holes. And if you want to make your, your container waterproof, pine pitch is also good for that. So gathering birch bark is the most important part of getting your container made. And when you find a good tree, you the first thing you want to do is put down tobacco to thank Creator for it. And after that, you want to find a place on the tree where it doesn't have a whole lot of like black, brittle spots because those will make your container weak. Um, and then you'll take a knife and you'll cut vertically about a quarter inch into the bark. You don't want to go too deep, otherwise you can kill the tree. Um, if you're making a very small thing, you don't have to go that deep because uh, birch bark is layered and so you can make it as, th as thick and strong as you want and it is quite strong, very thin as well. And once you've made that vertical cut, you're going to make two horizontal cuts at the, at the ends of those and then prise it up and slowly peel it off the tree. You can either use live trees or dead ones. If you use live ones, then the bark will grow black, back black. Now the Anishinaabe used uh, birch bark containers for many different things, storing food, storing clothing, just everyday things that they needed to do, like dishes or whatever. Um, and they would usually make them with a dark inner bark on the outside, which is may not be how we think of them. Um, and pretty much you cut it all from one piece, and so you have to be conscious of how big you want your bo the bottom of your container to be, and then how big you want the sides in order to figure out how to cut it. Here are two different patterns for birch bark containers. Like I said, there are many, many different kinds. Um, there is one called macaques who had sort of a cut-off pyramid shape, which were used to store food, especially for long periods of time. Um, if, if you want to make just an open basket, and then you can always make a top for it later by tracing around the opening so that it will fit. Um, they're used to collect berries. Sometimes for that they had like loops on them so people could attach them to their belts while they were out in the woods. Um, serve food, winnow rice, and they were very useful. So when you got to actually making your container, the first thing that you wanted to do is heat up your birch bark. And you could do that by putting it out in the sun or over the fire or by your electric heater, whatever. Just so that the sap in it kind of uh, softens up and then you can unroll your birch bark. And then after that, you want to figure out what kind of container you're making and figure out a good way to lay it out on there so you're not hitting too many weak spots. And cut it out, and then you want to fold it into its desired shape. And so then along the seams, you'll punch holes with either an awl or an antler or something. And when you take your lacing, that's the spruce root, the skin spruce root, or the basswood fiber, you're going to take that and pull it nice and tight and flat when you're doing your sewing. And just bring it from the inside of the basket out around tight and flat. And you want to do this nicely so that the basket will be fairly waterproof. After that, if you're going to be using your container for a long time, you may want to reinforce the rim with by taking a twig of willow and putting half of it splitting it down and then putting half of it on the inside and half it on outside and using spruce root to kind of whip stitch it around the edge to keep that nice and sturdy. And then decoration was often an important part too. Um, for birch bark containers made in the spring, you could scrape away the darker outer layer to reveal the lighter inner bark beneath and make nice patterns that way. Sometimes porcupine quills were used and what you did was you punch two holes and then slot one bit of the porcupine quill into it and then kind of fold it over and, to, and put it through the other hole, almost like a staple. And then you could always put a lining of birch bark on the inside if you didn't want to see the porcupine quills on the inside.
And here are all the sources that I used for doing my project. Thanks very much.